Uh, as of this recording, we're about to hit midnight of Monday, October 12th. And yeah, my dumbass at the time had the idea, let's record late at night so you'll be able to edit throughout the entire week instead of recording on Monday and editing just three days. <sighs> Slowly starting to regret that decision. Future Eugene, when you're editing this, just remember this. Don't record at midnight ever again. Please, for your sake, thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Or if you're watching this in the morning, good morning. Or if you're watching this in the evening, good evening. And yeah, welcome to another episode of Eugene Reviews. I am Eugene. It's currently midnight of Monday morning, uh, October 12th. At this time, uh, the Astros lost to the Tampa Bay Rays 2-1, uh, game one of the ALCS. Thank you, baby, for the shirt. Yeah, it's a bit of a bummer, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the Yankees aren't in the playoffs. <laughs> Uh, but enough about losers. As a matter of fact, speaking of losers, well, losers that become winners, we are going to go over our next film, which happens to be the next film in the Marvel Cinematic Universe that we're going to be going over. And this happens to be the 10th Marvel Cinematic Universe chronologically and the 11th one that we've gone over so far. And it is none other than the 2014 surprise box office hit of Guardians of the Galaxy. Yep, Guardians of the Galaxy. One of the more surprising films of the entire, you know, catalog of the MCU. I remember this being a big deal with my friends, you know, really having no kind of prior knowledge of this entity known as Guardians of the Galaxy, but still being excited because this film looked like it was going to be a thrilling adventure from all the previews, from all the merchandise, from just the looks of it. It just, it just felt like it was going to be something special. But it is a big risk because the fact that nobody really knows outside of you know hardcore fans what Guardians of the Galaxy is. But yeah, I do recall I watched this film three times throughout the entire opening weekend uh, in theaters. As you can tell from the amount of times I've watched it, really kind of my impression of this. But let's go further into this in regards to its development, its execution, and its overall reception and response with the three acts. So let's go ahead and hit all three acts, starting with act one. Act one, development. Guardians of the Galaxy, take one. So the story of the upbringing for this script for the Guardians of the Galaxy actually starts around 2010. It was initially pitched as a part of Marvel's MCU phase two. A lot of momentum going in from phase one with all of the, the hype and all of the great um, success from the first Avengers film. Now it's kind of starting to spread out sporadically into phase two with more stories following the same characters, but also introductions of new characters, such as the ones we're gonna be talking about in the Guardians of the Galaxy. In 2012 at San Diego Comic-Con, it was announced that Guardians of the Galaxy would be developed for a 2014 release, and it would be written and directed by James Gunn. Now I know two questions came out of that. Who are the Guardians of the Galaxy? And who is James Gunn? Well, I'm glad you asked. Guardians of the Galaxy is a more unknown, more fresher, more new um, group within the Marvel comic uh, realm that happened to also be part of the Avengers. It's a really risky move and take on Marvel's end being that no one outside of hardcore fans really knew who were the Guardians of the Galaxy. But if there's one thing about Disney you can trust is that they can be able to introduce these new characters, these these colorful new cast of characters uh, to a worldwide audience. So after looking through a couple of scripts and treatments, they eventually landed on Guardians of the Galaxy as the next film to be made for the MCU. And for a film and project and entity such as this that involves otherworldly characters and intergalactic beings and other dimensional, you know, settings, a feat such as this required a very, very extensive director, which is why they turned to James Gunn. And James Gunn's been a part of writing films such as the live-action Scooby-Doo, one and two to be exact. His feature-length debut film Slither, 
didn't perform well in the box office but was a cult hit with fans and critics alike. And he actually did do a superhero film called Super, mind you, with uh, Rain Wilson, even though it wasn't, you know, favorable amongst fans and critics, it was still worthy to put under James Gunn's belt. But yeah, stories such as Guardians, it felt like it's perfect match made in heaven for James Gunn to direct. Even Joss Whedon, who had some say-so in regards to directors, especially since he's going to be doing the next Avengers film, he gets say-so on really the directors that Disney hires. And he was ecstatic when he heard that James Gunn was going to be directing Guardians, saying that, you know, this was a good fit for him. A couple interesting notes, James Gunn did mention that the character introductions were a little bit difficult to target. The main one being Thanos, who wasn't really a part of the entire film. But being that he is, you know, a very, very important and, you know, high caliber character, it was, it was very vital for James Gunn to really kind of showcase him and display him in a true kind of introductory form. But other than that, it looks like Disney was really going to kind of roll with this and, you know, put all their time and investment on this relatively unknown property by putting in a lot of great actors and actresses to be a part of this. Particularly the main five cast members for the Guardians of the Galaxy. You've got Chris Pratt playing the cocky space cowboy known as Peter Quill, aka Star Lord. You've got Zoe Saldana, who's had her share of blockbuster films such as Avatar, playing the daughter of Thanos, Gamora. You've got wrestler turned actor Dave Batista playing Drax the Destroyer. And then CGI and voice, you've got Bradley Cooper, Academy Award nominated Bradley Cooper playing Rocket the Raccoon. And then finally, you've got Vin Diesel voicing the lovable but deadly Groot. And then of course, you've got a slew of great cast members as the supporting cast, like John C. Riley, Lee Pace, Jaman Hunsu, Karen Gillan, Glenn Close, and Benicio Del Toro, and Michael Rooker, who plays Yondu. So a star-studded cast all throughout this entire film. That's relatively unknown. So really you should be able to pique your interest initially just from the names of all of these actors even if you haven't heard of guardians of the galaxy also another thing to mention in the development is the music play james gunn decided to use 60s and 70s songs in particular those two decades to really kind of have an identity of earth in this film being that quill chris pratt's character is the only kind of human involved in this entire story he was kind of the focal point of latching together earth and the other universes involved in the Guardians of the Galaxy. So it offers a nice touch, a nice retro groovy vibe, and it just latches on an identity of Earth to this entire film. So once again, initially pitched in 2010 and started development in 2012, the hiring of James Gunn, which would be kind of a match made in heaven for this type of story. Nailing the character introductions was vital and very difficult for James Gunn. And finally, a slew of award-winning and critically acclaimed actors and actresses, especially the main five members of the Guardians of the Galaxy. And of course, the retro 60s and 70s music playlist influencing this entire film. All right, with all that, let's go ahead and hit Act 2. Act 2, Execution. Guardians of the Galaxy, take one. So Guardians of the Galaxy, where do I begin with that? First off, I enjoyed really kind of the Star Wars-like vibe. It feels like an intergalactic space opera slash epic. You get the feel of that with all of these unique characters and unique um, creatures that you see all throughout the galaxy. You can tell that Star Wars did really have a big influence in the way that this film is being identified. I do enjoy the music all throughout. Hooked on a Feeling by Blue Swede. I Want You Back by the Jackson 5. Coming Get Your Love by Redbone. Cherry Bomb by The Runaways. And of course, Ain't No Mountain High Enough by Marvin Gaye. What is also unique about this film too is the unique blend of genres. It's not necessarily just sci-fi. It's not necessarily just action adventure. There's a lot of a good blend and there's a lot of a good portion of certain genres in this film like drama, comedy, action, adventure, all of them. Of course, there's great action. There's great action sequences all throughout with great visual effects and great CGI. There's also some great side-splitting humor from the banter that you see and, you know, just the, the humorous charm that each character possesses. But also, there's something deep and emotional 
that just tugs on your heart, especially with the relationship between Peter Quill and his mother, especially with, you know, a bunch of the sacrifices that take place in this film, like Star-Lord sacrificing himself for Gamora, or Groot sacrificing himself for his team. And then the adventurous tone is very adventurous. It's very fun. It's very free. It's very, you know, just, it's just so mesmerizing to see. I think the great blend of the action as well as the visuals just makes things so, it's so enticing. As I mentioned the characters, yes, they are memorable. They are charming. Peter Quill is sarcastic, funny, and emotional, and just a true, true charm to see on screen. Zoe Saldana nailed it with Gamora physically as well as, you know, with her character arc. Dave Bautista, who is still kind of a novice in acting, really does a fantastic job in physically portraying Drax the Destroyer, but also having this underlying tone of humor with it to go. And of course, Bradley Cooper and Vin Diesel don't physically uh, get involved in this role, but their voices do play as a character in itself. I mean, you, you can't even tell that that's Bradley Cooper on screen. I don't know if it's a Bostonian accent mixed with a New York accent, but whatever Bradley Cooper, you know, concocted, it was brilliant to put for Rocket the Raccoon. And yes, Vin Diesel just says three words, well, technically five words in this film, but they still hold emotional depth to it. The way he says it, you know, the pitch to it, the tone of it. You feel every single I am group, and even that one we are group. And I think too, in a film like this, which is important in introducing each character, I think that all of the characters, the main ones especially, were introduced justly. Each character is brilliantly highlighted, and that's all credited to James Gunn for both writing the style and writing, you know, the arcs of these characters, but also having a fluid direction for each of these characters, especially moving on um, with the entire MCU. Because, of course, we're going to see them again in future films, but we need something to kind of help springboard and catapult that for audiences to get ready for. So, once again, great music, great action, great drama, great humor, the banter, chemistry, and the overall charm of each of the members of the Guardians was phenomenal. The direction that James Gunn took was amazing, and it is, it is pretty befitting to see Gunn uh, utilize his skill for such a story, such a, a unique story and property like the Guardians of the Galaxy. Alright, that being said, let's go ahead and hit the final act. Let's hit Act 3. Act 3, Execution. Guardians of the Galaxy, take one. Now, as great as the film was, will it translate well with the box office? And the answer, of course. I mean, it's not really a question anymore of if they succeed, it's how much they succeed. So surprising amount for Guardians of the Galaxy making $330 million domestically here in the US. While overall, including international totals, it came out to $773 million worldwide. That makes it the third highest grossing film of 2014 and makes it the number one highest grossing superhero film of the year as well. The film followed also with a bunch of accolades like nominations and wins of certain awards. It did get nominated for two Academy Awards even though it didn't win. And just like the 1977 Star Wars film, the merchandise for Guardians of the Galaxy blew up. I mean, you couldn't go anywhere in 2014. You couldn't go any type of department store or type of uh, toy or collection store during that year and not see a Guardians of the Galaxy affiliated item. I mean, there were group plants, group Funko Pops, there was a bunch of Guardians of the Galaxy affiliated stuff in time for Christmas because that was when the home video was released. I think the Marvel Senior VP of Merchandising really was surprised at the volume of merchandise, especially the second wave during the holiday season. And then of course, the ultimate creme de la creme um, really being well received by fans. A lot of people, including myself, were really surprised at just how well executed Guardians was. Being an unknown property, not relatively being, you know, more mainstream like other heroes like Captain America and Iron Man, but still making an identity for itself because of how well this film came out to be. It's truly grandiose, not only um, in how well it was received by critics and fans, but just how just how much it reflected in box office numbers and merchandise and accolades. It's it truly is remarkable. Now, let's finally hit the verdict for Guardians of the Galaxy. 
To say I was really surprised at how much I love Guardians of the Galaxy would truly be an understatement. I was floored by really how fun this was, how charming it looked, how full of heart each characters had, and just the tone of it. It, it, it was adventurous, it was magnificent. You were invested in every single second of this entire film just from the way they looked, from the way that they performed, from the way this other dimension and this other side of the galaxy looks like to the way each character you know interacts with one another i was truly just spellbinded by how well it was and how well i liked it it was fun i had a fun time watching this film i still have a fun time watching this even after theaters watching it at home watching it on cable tv watching it on my digital accounts it's really an enjoyable film that I can rewatch. The rewatchability of this speaks volumes in of itself. James Gunn did a tremendous job um, taking uh, taking the helm of directing this piece, relatively unknown, but yet filled with star power, filled with potential, and establishing an identity for this property now because of this film. Now, when anyone thinks of Guardians of the Galaxy, you're not going to think of the comic books. You're not gonna think of, you know, the initial first issues and whatnot. You're gonna think of how great it was because of the first film uh, that came out. I give all kudos, not just to James Gunn, but I give kudos to Walt Disney. I give kudos to Kevin Feige for really having a mind and vision for for how he wanted to, to display these characters on such a, just a high spectrum and high level. And then I give credit to the entire cast, in particular Chris Pratt, Zoe Saldana, Dave Bautista, Bradley Cooper, Vin Diesel, for really making such a great execution in their characters and understanding their characters and making us fall in love with these beautiful creatures and wanting to invest more time and, and love, uh, especially down the road for the MCU. All right, I've already kissed ass on this film. I'll go ahead and give my rating for this. Um, I will say that Guardians of the Galaxy is a very, very strong and solid 9.25 out of 10. And once again, we are doing our MCU rankings. I have done 11 films total. This is the 10th film in the chronological order of the MCU. Remember, we did Black Panther a few weeks ago. So here is my updated list. Somewhere around here. And of course, if you're following along, you know what film is going to be next. We are going to tackle Age of Ultron. And that's actually going to be in next week's video as I got something very interesting planned for Halloween Eve. So be on the lookout for those Avengers Age of Ultron as well as my Halloween special coming up on Halloween Eve as well as take a look at my special top five recommendations for the month of October on my Instagram page at Eugene Review. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe, comment, get the word out about this channel, get the word out about what I'm doing. As I say, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this as much as I'm enjoying doing these. Also, give me your thoughts and comments on Guardians of the Galaxy. Did you think that there could have been more done for this? Do you think that this was too much too soon let me know in the comments section below once again any and all comments are welcome until then this has been another episode of eugene reviews i am eugene and this is me signing off and i will see you guys next week and that is a wrap who's 12 30 oh man this is tiring yeah, I don't know why I did this at me, man. I'm probably not going to do this again. Also, too, special shout out to uh, LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers for winning a record 17th NBA championship for the organization. LeBron winning his fourth finals MVP, winning a championship in his third organization. Championship was for Kobe. Rest in peace, Mamba. <laughs>